Kim Zhu versus Brian Mendoza. 12 rounds in the 154-pound division for Zhu's WBO junior middleweight title. So this is his technically his first title defense. We know that as soon as Jamel Charlo stepped into the ring with Canelo Alvarez, he was going to be stripped of that belt. And it went to Tim Zhu. But much respect to both of these men for taking this fight because they could have easily went different routes and took on lesser fights or they could have waited out and see what the next year had in stores for them. But let's get into it. Let's start with Tim Zhu. 23 wins, no losses, 17 wins by way of knockout. Tim Zhu has been on a big upward swing in the recent years, right? We go back to 2020 when that momentum kind of started to shift upward, you know, when he fought Jeff Horn and he stopped Jeff Horn in the eighth round, I believe it was. I think that was the first fight that put a little bit of spotlight on Tim Zhu because Jeff Horn wasn't chopped liver. You know what I'm saying? He Horn still, Horn is a guy at his best, beat Manny Pacquiao and took Manny's belt. And he wasn't too far removed from that. So that meant something there. That win against Jeff Horn has some weight to it there. After that, he fought uh, Bowen Morgan. Brown? Bowen. Bowen Morgan, I believe it was, stopped him in the first round. He stopped Dennis Hogan the fight after that in the fifth round. Then he fought Stevie Sparks, stopped Stevie Sparks in three. After that, he fought Takeshi Inoue, where he just beat up on Inoue for most of that fight. But you got to see a variety of shots that Tim Zhu possesses. The uppercuts from wide angles, the hooks to the bodies, the stalking his opponent, the pa his patience, his accuracy, the placement in his punching, the looping shots around Inoue's high guard. And he just found ways to hurt his opponent. But I did like the fact that it went 12 rounds because you get to see a little bit more and see more weak areas that you need to go back and work on back into the gym. 12 round fights are always good in my opinion. And at the same time, Tim Zhu isn't this defensive wizard, right? So he was there to get hit. There were times when in a way landed cleanly on him, right? And countered cleanly on him, but he wasn't able to capitalize on it because to Tim Zhu makes really good adjustments in real time. After that, he fought Terrell Gaush and adversity hit Tim Zhu very quickly. Tim Zhu got dropped in the first round. He got caught with the shot in an exchange that dropped him and he fell to the canvas, right? Not the first time that he's been dropped before in a fight, but the stakes get higher. And when the fights are close, every single thing matters. But this is the type of toughness and mentality that Tim Zhu has. I thought he got dropped because he kind of overcommitted, went into there more offensively than defensively, and just a little too overconfident and wasn't worried about what was going to come back at him. But he picked himself up, got back off of the canvas, and showed that I can still control this fight. I'm going to come in a little bit more cautiously, but I'm not going to back down the pressure. I'm going to calculate it and I'm going to fight in spur. I now respect your shots, but I'm still going to dominate and control this fight. And that exactly what Tim Zhu did. You could see he slowed things down a lot more, slowed down the aggression, calculated it a little bit more. He was more patient. The placement and the accuracy just in heightened after that. He moved his head off the line a little bit more, started punching in combinations, and he took back that whole momentum and just punished Gausha for the rest of the fight. He just pounded the body consistently in that relentless pressure and just smothered him with different shots. And I don't think his opponent ever really recovered from some of those beatdowns and, and, and just the body shots that he took. But it was another 12 round fight that I think benefited Tim Zhu definitely in the long run. After that, he goes to fight Tony Harrison. This was a little bit of a different style for Tim Zhu because Harrison is a boxer. Right, He's going to slip and jab and counter. He's going to move and then he's going to reset and make sure you know that that jab is right there, right in front of your face. Tony Harrison's a very technically sound fighter and you just kind of question, could Tony Harrison dial back the clock one more time? and outbox Tim Zhu for 12 rounds? Could he keep the distance from Tim Zhu for 12 rounds? That was the question. 
Quite frankly, I was impressed with how Tim Zhu fought that fight, man. He he countered well. His hand speed was quicker than I've seen in previous fights. His accuracy continues to improve. He, he's always a solid body puncher. The man throws vicious body shots. But I saw him box on the outside a little bit more, using fangs to set things up a little bit more. Then he mixed that with his normal flow once he found his rhythm and that relentless pressure started to come your way. And even though he's not always hitting you, just your constant moving of trying to get out the way, that tires you out. And he caught Harrison with some shots a couple times in that fight that wobbled him a few times before the knockout eventually happened. But once Tim Zhu starts applying pressure, man, and those shots start to connect, it's going to take a strong will to be able to endure and get back up if you do get knocked down. Brian Mendoza, he's got that will. Now, in Zhu's last fight, he fought Carlos Ocampo in a fight that was very quick. He made short work of Ocampo. I mean, short work ended in the first round. It, it almost just looked like Tim Zhu looked angry, <laughs> but also just looked like, man, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a statement. I'm going to get in and I'm going to get out because that's exactly what he did in that fight. So he's going to be looking to continue his winning ways in convincing fashion, right? It's his first tile defense. And Mendoza is not going to make it easy by no means, man. You can't count out Brian Mendoza. So let's talk about Brian Mendoza. 22 wins, 16 wins by way of knockout. Mendoza is coming off of the biggest win of his career after stopping the towering inferno and handing him the first loss of his career that was a wonderful fight uh, a wonderful display of heart will determination belief the underdog story it was just a great fight for brian mendoza before he landed the shot that cleaned out sebastian fandora uh man all the judges had it 60 54 in favor of fandora Right. Fundora was landing big on Mendoza, man. Mendoza was going down the path of looking a little lubinish in the face because he was getting touched up, touched up consistently. That nose was starting to bleed. That face was starting to swell. But at the same time, that was happening. Mendoza was still getting some stuff off. You know what I'm saying? He was still landing some shots. He was letting shots go from all angles, overhand shots, looping shots, swinging wide shots everywhere. Whatever you can touch, man, that's what you have to hit. I feel like when you're fighting Sebastian Fondor, the taller guy, just hit whatever you can hit. Hit what's in front of you and the face at the right time will open up. I was not mad at that game plan from Brian Mendoza. Fandora likes to bang on the inside. And even though he's the taller guy, and you would think sometimes the taller guys would want to box a little bit more for the whatever the case is, Fandora likes to bang on the inside. He's always going to be the taller guy, no doubt about that, especially in this division. And it always comes with its advantages, but also comes with its disadvantages as well. So if he wants to land certain shots, particularly those uppercuts, he has to drop his hands, step forward with his feet, pivot a little bit to generate force and momentum upwards. But at the same time, when he's doing that, it leaves a vulnerable side of him open. Fundora is there to get hit. He's not the most defensively sound fighter out there as well. When Mendoza clipped Fundora, man, his head was ducked down to the left side. Fundora, being the awareness guy that he is, saw the opening, went for the uppercut that he's been doing and having success with many times in that fight, pivoted his right leg, but his right hand wasn't in a defensive position to protect himself so he went down to come up with the left and at the same time that right hand dropped and brian mendoza came over with the overhand left that landed clear as day on fundora's chin and completely knocked his whole rhythm off knocked off the equilibrium off and it i'm i'm surprised right when he got clipped i don't know what the heck kept him up because when he got clipped his body just like swung it just it just crashed but not only did it crash, right? 
Mendoza followed that up with a right hand straight down the middle, landed cleanly, and just as Fundora was about to drop, he came through with the left and hit him again. And to make matters at worse, all of that inertia and that force coming down from a guy who's almost seven foot lashed his head back and it hit the canvas. And I'm like, oh yeah, there's no doubt about it. This man has a concussion. That was too much variables plus the fall, plus the canvas, plus the whiplash. The man definitely had a concussion. One punch completely changed the outcome of this fight. If you did not know Brian Mendoza before, that fight definitely made you know his name. It gave you a taste of what he can do. However, I think this fight is going to be, from a stylistic standpoint, similar to kind of how when he fought Jesus Ramos where he's going to have to weather the storm a little bit. He's going to be pressured. He's going to have to protect the body. He's going to have to be quick with his hands, counter punching. He's going to have to make the missed opportunities count because Tim Zhu is going to come and he's going to come and bring the pressure when he is feeling comfortable and in his groove. So he's going to have to be moving and countering and looking to gauge Tim Zhu's timing and take control of that. Jesus Ramos, man, had success when he was landing, going to the body, right? Started to open up Brian Mendoza a little bit more towards the end of the fight as well when he did get tired around the seventh to eighth round from what I could see. Ramos started to do work. Ramos is a very good puncher, very good body puncher, but I think Tim Zhu is a stronger and more accurate body puncher right? Mendoza took some of Ramos's shots, but after that, he would tie him up because it hurt. Any body shot hurt, but some guys, they got a little bit more pop and steam and accuracy, man, it, it hurts a little bit more. Tim Zhu is one of those guys. So this is going to be an interesting matchup, man. And I'm interested to see what Mendoza can do, what his team and his training has been doing in their stable, what adjustments he makes. I don't question his heart. I don't question his will, nor his power, nor his skill. But can he align everything again like he did against Sebastian Fondora? We'll see on fight night. So who wins? I think this fight is going to have its moments. We know in boxing, momentum can turn and swing at any given moment. We saw Mendoza capitalize off that one moment. But I also can't ignore the scorecards. It was looking rough for Mendoza until it wasn't. I think Tim Zhu is more polished offensively than Fundora. I think he's a bigger puncher and I think he's more accurate as well. Tim Zhu punches with timing, patience, accuracy, and he happens to have pop with it as well. We can't rule out Brian Mendoza because he's got the skill and the will to step in with anybody and give anybody problems. However, I don't think it'll fare the same way as he did against Fondora. I think Tim Zhu gets it done, and I think he wins by stoppage in the latter rounds, maybe between 9 to 12, by an accumulation of body shots. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you're enjoying the content, enjoying the videos, getting something valuable from it, then I hope that you consider becoming a member. I don't always get to do all the suggested videos you guys suggest in the comment section below, but if you become a member, those suggested videos rise to the top and I will do my best to get those done for you that week. If you'd like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. My Cash App handle will be on screen as well. Also, my social media handles will be on screen as well. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel and will be greatly, greatly appreciated. Shout out to everybody that continues to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate each of you. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video this long, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel, and we'll definitely see you next time.